I put my hand down and she more or less crawled onto it right away. I, I was working out in the garden. I turned around and I said, oh, there's a bee. And it wasn't till I picked her up and I, I kind of looked at her and I thought, you haven't any wings. Okay, the first thing you realize about this video is that Scottish people are so freaking nice. They're way too nice. It makes them a little crazy. And it was at that point I thought, how are you going to manage? So I gave her a wee sugary water. I had a heather plant in the garden and I kind of hid it in there and I thought, well, she'll maybe get some nectar from the flowers. Basically, I thought, by the time I got home from work, I thought she would probably have crawled off. Of course the bee didn't move, it doesn't have wings. That's not evidence that it loves you. When I, I found her, I thought, okay, I'm really gonna have to take you indoors and, and help you out. So I kept her in overnight. Okay, <laughs> pause it right there. The title of this video describes this woman and the bee as becoming best friends. But, and no disrespect to the woman, she's clearly a sweetheart and I would not knock her generosity. But I doubt that this relationship has much potential for friendship. I think that whenever the dependency is <laughs> so great, that's not a friendship. That's dubiously unequal, let's say. Like, it's interesting. Think about it this way. If I were to develop this sort of friendship with a homeless person on the street, uh, people would be horrified by <laughs> my, my uh, abuse of them and exploitation of them. Like, if I gave them food and shelter on condition that they become my best friend and I get to tell everyone how much they love me and how much I save them. <laughs> it, like if that was the terms of the agreement in, in, in a human relationship, uh, people would be absolutely horrified. <laughs> but if you do it with a, a bee that has no wings, it's so sweet and heartwarming. Also, why is she giving the bee sugar? If she really cared about the bee, she wouldn't give the bee a poison that's bad for you. She might give the bee health food or something like that. I mean, come on. Everybody knows that sugar is toxic and it's just an artifact of a multi-million dollar lobbying scheme and complicity among academic scientists. If you love this bee, you should give it organic paleo raisin balls or something. Chelsea you got a will to live. They had said it might be this deformed wing virus. I couldn't let her go because the weather was so awful. I just felt that she was such a, a wee pet that, you know, she wasn't going to manage just very well on her own at all. And she needs my help. So I went and stood, just stood in the garden centre and watched what the bees liked. <laughs> so you had to go to the garden centre to observe what bees like. So I got some bits and pieces together made an indoor retreat for her. It was actually a birdhouse and I filled it with sort of nesting material. So she went in and had a look, yeah, and she sort of cozied herself inside it. The realisation at that time was, right, I really have a responsibility for this wee creature now. Oh yeah, you locked it up, all right. <laughs> Again, imagine the analogy to a human relationship. What would people think about that if I did that? I think that was probably a turning point for me. She just took to me right away. She would take drinks from my finger. And she would crawl all over me. She would snuggle into my hand and sleep. She's not trying to sleep in your hand. She's trying to die in your hand because her life sucks. Where are we sleeping now, are you? you seen that? saying, put me out of my misery. Yeah, if I put my hand up and she just went up and then she started just sitting on my nose. I, I don't think I really thought at that time that we were bonding in any way. This bee is climbing all over your face because it's fucked up. It doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know how to live. It has no idea how who you are. It doesn't love you. I mean, maybe I guess it's plausible that it uh, has some sort of association with your with your smells or the chemicals on your skin or whatever it might be. But this bee is clearly just sort of floundering. And if it's sitting on your nose, it just shows how confused it is. I probably was surprised a wee bit at my own feelings for her. Clever, aren't you? Emotions. I thought, I'm seeing things with B that... Also, she names the B a B. <laughs> know or see. Now, to be fair, I do not doubt this woman's sincerity. She is seriously really nice and a noble person, by all means. But here's where she's really starting to deceive herself. The fact that she was quite happy being in my presence 
was a big reward for me and I think she definitely thrived with being with another living being and of course I talked to her <laughs> as you do. Okay, this is why it starts to get a, a little too much for me. Oh, is that good? Clever girl. You're lively. Where are you going? She would just be neither hungry or, or, or thirsty, just happy to be with me. Okay, now, <laughs> listen to that again. Oh, is that good? Clever girl. Is it me, or does it almost seem like this relationship is somewhat romantic? Sexual, I dare say. Oh, is that good? Clever girl. You're lively. Where are you going? I mean, that's like, that's like pillow talk. <laughs> I could tell days before she stopped eating, she would drink, and I thought, this is it. She is really slowing down now, because really in B terms, she was a wee old lady. Okay, so this woman assumes that the bee is dying from old age. I mean, how this woman dates the bee's age is beyond me. She doesn't provide any scientific methodology for that. She's just asserting it. I mean, this woman might just be killing the bee through her treatment of the bee. You know, when you inculcate a state of dependency on a bee that's not able to fly. Later and later into the evening, she just got slower and slower. She was in my hand and uh, she died that night. Of course I was sad, but I think I was immensely proud that I had been able to give her a comfortable life and look after her. Lady, you killed this bee. <laughs> She's in the garden. Put her with one of her favorite heathers. I think she probably did teach me a lot about myself. Okay, so you <laughs> induce in this poor bee a state of dependency on you without her consent. Trick yourself into thinking that you have this loving bond with her when in fact you're just weakening its will to live and confusing the fuck out of it. You c accidentally kill it and you then also blame that on natural factors and you feel proud of yourself. Yeah, people, the ability for human beings to rationalize is just incredible. Bees are terribly important to us and I, I hope people will, will learn to live alongside them, that we respect them and we nurture and we care for, for all the wildlife that we have around us. I think that's our duty of care. Now here's my question. Does that bee still have a stinger? Because I wonder if it ever stung this woman. It must have lost the stinger when it lost its wings. Uh, because I don't think you would let a bee walk across you if it's going to sting you. There was no mention of stinging. In fact, maybe it's fake bee. Maybe this is all just a uh, marketing ploy. You can't trust anything these days. Not that I'm paranoid.